it is fascinating to me because I've studied a lot of Roman history. <clears throat> yep. Now, when they talk about the different emperors and Julius Caesar himself, uh, any of these people, you take a look at them raising armies, and there's never any mention by mainstream historians who funds these things. These things didn't happen for free. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't produce the, the you know, when, when you take a look at the phalanx that the, uh, that the Romans used, you had to manufacture shields. You had to manufacture these short stabbing swords they used, uh, in order to use the Roman phalanx in battle. You know, that costs money. <laughs> All right, but but you of notice, of course it did. The, where did they get that money? And that's the same thing with Adolf Hitler. The, Germany was broke after the First World War was over. Germany was actually broke, and 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 it was said by the historians that every day, every afternoon, <clears throat> horse-drawn carriages would ride through the major cities of Germany and pick up the dead bodies on the streets that had just actually starved to death and laid down and died on the street on the street corners because they were broke there was no money food right. was uh, had no food and people were dying uh, and so the the horse drawn carriages would go through the cities of Germany and pick up all the dead bodies who had died that day and then out of that incredible, horrible situation of a, of a massive country like Germany being totally broke and starving, Adolf Hitler comes into power out of nowhere in 1920s, late 1920s. He comes into power and starts ranting and raving about, you know, this is, we should put an end to this terrible tragedy. And then all of a sudden he's been running for uh, the, he's being run for the chancellor. Ship, and then he becomes chancellor, and all of a sudden, he's building the greatest standing military machine the world has ever seen. Adolf Hitler built the the greatest navy, the greatest standing army, the most well-fed, well-clothed, and well-army military industrial complex on the face of the earth. And mm -hmm. nobody seems to have ever asked a silly, childish question: Where did he get the money? Well, right. Uh, the funny thing is that a mainstream historian will try and explain to you that it was Fritz Tyson who funded the, the Third Reich's uh, military machine. Problem is that the machine that Hitler built cost way more than Fritz Tyson had. <laughs> Um, no, I'm serious. On. Mathematically, uh, it's impossible for Fritz Tyson to have funded uh, what would have been necessary to do all the things that Hitler did. It's, it's well, I mean, there. we say that Wall Street, Wall Street is a classic example. Wall Street did this and Wall Street did that and Wall Street funded this and that. But when you talk about Wall Street, you're not talking about Wall Street. You're talking about a lot of guys that work on Wall Street. Right. You're talking about a lot of names, a lot of big names in banking and insurance companies and maritime admiralty shipping companies and big big institutions and large corporations, not just one man. No, we're talking a Wall Street, a whole conglomerate of powerful people who are together. They are wealthy, and they're going to stay wealthy. And the way they all stay wealthy is they protect each other, mm. like lawyers protect each other, cops protect each other. Doctors protect each other, you know, and it's the poor people in the street. We don't protect nothing. We're just the saps that pay for everything. So well, when you, you find out that yeah. the, the, the Adolf Hitler financed the whole uh, Second World War, he financed the restoring of the Nazi empire and almost took over the world doing it. He was so powerful he could go into Russia, set up the war with the United States, England, Europe. Russia and go into Africa and the Nazis were all over the earth doing all kinds of things. Where did he get the money? Right. You know, I actually, I, I would like to ask a question, Jordan, since, since we're talking about the Third Reich and I want to link it back to the subject matter for tonight. Um, I, I still have two questions from listeners, by the way, <laughs> but okay. I want to throw one of my own in if you don't mind. Um, you know, I've, I've seen these very vague studies about the mystical aspects, the esoteric aspects of the SS. During yep. that time, there is a whole order, it appears, but the, the, the records are incomplete from what I know. I mean, I'm sure that there's lots of stuff that's captured and probably uh, still classified, you know, that, but we can't see it. 
uh, as the public. We captured a lot of archives <clears throat> when the Third Reich fell. Uh, if you don't believe me, the guy who had access to three buildings worth of it wrote a book called The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, literally launching the entire genre of what we call modern contemporary history and literature. But, you know, the reality is that uh, most of the public has never seen the, these other weird aspects to the SS. It's not simply adherence to the leader. There was uh, a, a mystical, I, I want to call it mystical, I want to call it esoteric, I want to call it a cult. And I think all three of these things qualify uh, aspect to the SS, which is not all of uh, the German army, which is not all of Germany, but uh, seem to be a, a, a kind of a club, if you will. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I've never really heard too much about that, except to see that there's some evidence on it. Um, does that link to any of what it is we've talked about so far? So far, it's exactly what I'm talking about, precisely, uh -huh. <laughs> because because the SS SS was just one part of a far bigger bigger picture. Uh, the the best minds today on the earth there's there's quite a few brilliant people out there that I have an extraordinarily uh, high respect for. Their minds, they're brilliant people who have really done their homework. Anthony Sutton was probably the first one I would name, Anthony Sutton. I think he is no longer with us. But he has written so many books on the esoteric, hidden world of finance that the Nazis enjoyed. Mm -hmm. All of the mystical, dark stuff of where they got their money from and why all the U.S. banks, big banks like the uh, Manhattan, the big banks like Rockefeller's Bank, and uh, I, what about trying to say the Philadelphia Bank of um, J.P. Morgan, Morgan Guaranteed Trust, uh, the Rockefeller Bank, City Bank in Chicago, uh, the Commercial Bank in Georgia, and some of the biggest, actually the largest uh, uh, industrial complexes like General Electric, General Motors, Ford Motor Company, Eli Lilly Glass. Standard Oil, Union Oil, all of these big corporations, big banks, big industries, both in England and America, were all being financed and in, in sending money and materials to Germany. Coca-Cola, uh, all the different drink companies, the food companies, General Mills, General Electric, General <laughs> uh, Motors, uh, Ford Motor Company were all supplying hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars plus all of their equipment that they were producing here in America was being shipped directly to Germany to finance and supply Adolf Hitler for his war. But nobody seems to realize, you know, you're talking about high crimes and treason. Mm -hmm. You're talking about high crimes and treason where American corporations, big business, banking institutions, secret societies, fraternal orders were all behind Adolf Hitler, sending him money, sending him and the newspapers like the New York Times and the L.A. Times. All these big newspapers were, were, were working directly with Adolf Hitler. I mean, they even have a, a property out here in Southern California where Hitler was going to live once he took over the world. He was going to live and take and run the world from Los Angeles. And he has a big home that was here being built for him by the international bankers in, in, in New York and Chicago and San Francisco, Bank of America, the Giannini Banks. It's an incredible story of the real truth of the of the world you live in. Anthony Sutton, look up his name, Anthony Sutton, and get his books. Also, living today, a two brilliant minds on the same subject you'll need to know about is Joseph Farrell, F-A-R-R-E-L-L, -L, Joseph Farrell. Right. Nobody comes near him today. <clears throat> and, of course, there is... Peter Lavenda, L-E-V-E-N-D-A, Peter Lavenda, Joseph Farrell, and Anthony Sutton. All three of these are monstrous, brilliant men who have explained the whole Second World War was financed, organized, and directed out of New York City. 
Absolutely. New York, the Empire State. Well, right, and even we, we know publicly that uh, people like Prescott Bush and other members of the uh, board at, uh, <laughs> you know, the First Bank of New York were all called on the carpet for trading with the enemy. That's right. During World War II, this is this is the truth. Yeah, that would be the grandfather of uh, George H. W. Bush, or excuse me, the father of George H. W. Bush, the grandfather of George W. Bush. Yep. Uh, certainly, he was caught up in it. But the truth is that uh, a lot of that is all American. It's really American made. Even the and eugenics programs, uh, the concepts of eugenics, <clears throat> yeah, really American all, born. Eugenics was the eugenics, the getting rid of the the lower class of people for the new world order, uh, and all of that eugenics idea, that Nazism idea, was given birth to not in Germany, not by by Hitler at all. No, that whole idea was developed for. New world order, a whole new race of, of people, eugenics that would have a blonde hair, blue eyed, a master race. That was all dreamt up on Laurel Canyon in Studio City in Los Angeles, up on Laurel Canyon, Mulholland Drive. There was a whole cadre of, of Nazis, brilliant German theoreticians who lived up in the hills, what we call the Hollywood Hills, go up Laurel Canyon till you hit, uh, uh, you hit Mulholland. You can take left or right, and there's all kinds of secret, brilliant people living up there, and they were there back in the 20s and 30s, living in the hills of Los Angeles, developing an idea for taking over the world out of Los Angeles, Studio City, and it was called, and it was referred to as Nazism. And boy, when you find out who was financing the Nazi philosophies and ideas, and how it's connected to the different religions of today, it's an incredible story that you'd have to take about 50 years of your life and sit and just read and study everything so that your mind can be wrapped around the real truth of the world you live in.